School vouchers are in the middle of a bitter battle at the state capitol. We have the story. Plus, President Biden addresses the unidentified flying objects. Hear what he has to say. And from wicked wind to sunny skies and now brutal cold, our OU Nightly weather experts are tracking the latest. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Katherine Liberta. And I'm Bailey Coyle. We begin tonight with a drastic change in our weather as temperatures plummeted overnight. OU Nightly meteorologist Eli Millard is live on the South Oval to bring us the latest. Eli. Yeah, we had some storms fire up over I-35 last night. Those storms left and pushed off towards the east, but in, in behind it came a cold front and boy, you can certainly feel it. I'm shaking like a wet dog out here. It's cold. The winds are also gusting. You can see it blowing my hair around. But we're talking about temperature change here in Norman. We had a 29 degree difference here in Norman. Even places like McAllister are seeing even more a difference. And also with that wind out in western Oklahoma, we're seeing gusts pushing 40 miles an hour in western Oklahoma and not as much in southeastern Oklahoma. But coming up in weather headlines, I'm going to talk about a chilly Friday as well as a weekend warm up. And then I'll have time out. So next rain chances in coming for you guys next week. Ladies, back to you. Thanks, Eli. New legislation in Oklahoma is dividing the parents of school-aged children in the state. OU Nightly's Sydney Wallace is live in the newsroom with the story. Sydney. Catherine, House Speaker Charles McCall announced the details of the new bill this morning, and it includes hotly debated school voucher program. Here's a few things the bill would do. Provide a $2,500 raise for all teachers, but only if they stay in the same school next year. It would also increase per student spending, but it caps the amount at $2 million per district. That means smaller districts could end up with more money per student than the smallest than the state's largest districts like Norman and Oklahoma City. Most notable is the proposed legislation is the parental choice tax credits. The effective date of the legislation will be July 1, 2023, but the tax credit portion will be re retroactive to January 1st of this year, 2023 to enable individuals to claim full credit this year. If passed, the tax credits would be up to $5,000 per student attending a private school or $2,500 per homeschooled student. One of many reasons some parents and teachers are concerned is that there are not many private schools outside of Tulsa and Oklahoma City. We'll keep an eye on this bill and let you know what happens. Live in the newsroom, Sydney Wallace, OU Nightly. Thanks, Sydney. From K through 12 classes to higher education in Oklahoma, the governor and legislature are also looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, known as DEI, and asking a lot of questions. OU Nightly's Romello Woodfork is live on campus with details. Governor Kevin Stitt is not mincing words. He says the state's universities need to pull back on their, di on their diversity programs. have less DEI officers and more career placement counselors. Because when we send our kids to college, we expect our tuition to pay for their education, not their indoctrination. Almost two thirds of the OU student body is white, but slowly the university has been recruiting a more diverse student body and faculty. Leaders of OU's diversity program believe an inclusive student body creates a climate for student growth and success. So the goal of DEI is to, is to support 100% of our faculty, staff, and students um, in helping them to improve our cultural climate, to, uh, to be able to thrive on this campus. She says that DEI is a pillar for OU's future success. When folks see DEI and they're like, I don't know if that's for me, it is. Their governor is pushing back on DEI programs, but students don't seem caught up in the DEI backlash. Um, I never really was taught about diversity, equity, or inclusion, and I really like how OU is promoting it. Major institution with people from all over the world, all over the country coming here, so I think that um, more diversity in like educating students and really just doing more to prevent ignorance and that kind of thing is going to go farther than anything the like, career placement is going to do. Diversity, equity, and inclusion remains a part of the OU landscape. But for how long? The debate is beginning. The 
Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Department on OU's campus strives to make a home, for, a home away from home for all OU students. Reporting live, Romello Woodfork, OU Nightly. Thanks, Romello. On Tuesday, Norman residents voted to pass a multi-million dollar bond establishing a new aviation academy. OU Nightly's David Ash spoke with the Norman mayor on his thoughts about the election results. In a 5-0 vote, the Norman Board of Education approved a $353.9 million bond featuring the creation of a standalone aviation academy for high school students. That is an absolutely cool move that public schools, the university, and the tech center got together and partnered up together. We're all partners in, in what we're trying to do. It's a, a different concept of government that we're trying to use to get people to work together. The program will help students in high schools around the area prepare for a career in aviation at a variety of different disciplines. What the Aviation Academy means to us is kids in their freshman year in high school, if they choose a career in aviation, right now that's, that's just two things, that's flying aircraft and fixing aircraft. But in the future it'll have management of airports, it'll have all kinds of things that have to do with airlines. The new building will be located here at Max Westheimer Airport. It will feature its own building away from the terminals and be able to hold about 500 students. It's just super exciting to see this new group of students uh, be able to start on their aviation journey sooner in high school. It's not a super common thing to be able to do that, so it gives them a great opportunity. And especially with this shortage of pilots going on right now, um, it's great that it can engage more interest or engage more students in aviation. David Ash, OU Nightly. An additional part of the bond is money for a new sports stadium located at Norman North High School. The investigation continues nearly two weeks after the derailment of a train released hazardous chemicals into the air in eastern Ohio. Spencer Plato has that and the rest of today's national headlines from the News Center. President Joe Biden speaks out for the first time on the three objects shot down over North America. Biden says they're not sure what the objects were, but does not believe they were related to China, China's spy balloon program. The intelligence community believes the objects belong to private companies or institutions for scientific research. The community of El Paso, Texas, is shaken today after a mall shooting leaves one dead and three others injured. Police arrested two suspects shortly after last night's shooting. This is the second mass shooting in El Paso after 23 were killed and almost two dozen injured at a Walmart down the street back in 2019. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says it plans to hold the Norfolk Southern Train Company accountable for its role in the toxic train derailment in Ohio. This comes after residents held a town hall expressing concerns over air and water quality. Ohio's governor is asking the CDC to send medical experts to evaluate the community's health concerns. A spokesperson for the train company said it planned to send representatives to the town hall to explain how the company plans to respond to the crisis, but backed out due to safety concerns. Bailey Catherine, back to you. Thanks, Spencer. A new cathedral in Moore is expected to bring thousands of religious pilgrims in the coming months. When we return, find out about the unique history behind this new church. And a hair company is being sued. Ahead, learn how much damage the company has caused to consumers' hair. Will COVID-19 vaccines start to cost money? Snowforth tells us about Moderna's recent announcement and more in HealthBeat. Moderna says COVID-19 vaccines will remain free even after the U.S. public health emergency declaration ends in May. The vaccine was set to cost $110 to $130 per dose. Moderna says the uninsured will be able to get the shot for free through its patient assistance program. 
a group of women are suing the hair brand Olaplex, claiming the company's products caused hair loss and breakage. They say the company uses ingredients known to cause allergic reactions. Olaplex argues independent lab tests have proven products are completely safe. The women are seeking more than $75,000 in damages. And are your preschoolers eating their fruits and veggies? According to a report by the CDC, almost half of American children aged one to five don't eat a vegetable every day. And about a third don't get a daily serving of fruit. But more than half of children in this age group drink at least one sugared sweetened beverage per week. Eating these foods are important for children's health. Bailey, have you eaten your fruits and veggies today? I unfortunately have not had any vegetables today, but I did have an apple and some peanut butter for breakfast this morning. And in other news, a new cathedral is finally finished in Moore, Oklahoma, and its backstory is one for the history books. OU Nightly reporter DJ Gryers has that story. Who is Stanley Rother? Life Arvidsson, director of the shrine and its construction, shares just how unique this situation is to America. It's absolutely unique in the experience of the church in America that we have our own martyr from Okarchi, Oklahoma, uh, who is honored here uh, with a beautiful shrine in, in Oklahoma City. It's, it's absolutely unique for Christians throughout the United States. Uh, we don't have to travel to Rome now to hear the stories of the martyrs. We have our own here, one of us, you know, an Oklahoman hero. Stanley is the first American martyr who was killed in Guatemala and is well on his way to becoming a saint. For Catholics all over the world, the shrine has great meaning and is now a place of pilgrimage. We know that this shrine and this holy place isn't gonna be just for the people of Oklahoma, but it's gonna be for anybody and everybody for the whole world to come and descend as pilgrims. The church is expecting hundreds, if not thousands of pilgrims within the coming months to come celebrate and admire the life of Stanley Rothers starting this Friday, the 17th. DJ Greiser, OU Nightly. Thanks, DJ. The dedication, the dedication Mass for Stanley Rother takes place tomorrow, February 17th at 11 a.m. And temperatures on campus are much colder than they were yesterday. They definitely are. Eli, can you uh, tell us when students can expect a warm-up? Welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. Now, we did see some rainfall last night from those storms that fired up really over I-35. Since they fired up I-35, much of South Central Oklahoma kind of missed out on those heavier totals here in Norman, about 0.1 of an inch. Now, as you go off towards the east, some localized heavier rain in those places seeing over an inch. Now, back behind this uh, upper level low, we did have some snowfall you know, up, up to, upwards to an inch or three inches here in that blue, but even a localized seven inches just west of Boise City. Now here we are, here's that storm system. It's now off, way off towards our east. Look at the line of storms that we're seeing right here though. Now some of those storms we were tornado warned or earlier in the day, those now seem to, there seems to be one right here. We had some of those in Oklahoma, some of those storms were spinning like tops, but nothing went to the ground. And those are going to keep pushing off towards the east and keep dropping those warnings. Now for our drought monitor, really um, eastern Oklahoma, they're, they're about out of it now. The last couple weeks they've seen some good rain. But out in western Oklahoma, they're really missing out. We're kind of doing well here in Norman. We could do a little bit better. But looking outside, it looks nice, but it certainly doesn't feel it. 39 degrees, winds out of the northwest about 30 miles an hour. Looking at the west satellite, we're clearing out. That storm system's off towards our east. Cloud cover is just going away. Now, current temperatures outside, we're feeling like 37. Here's our freezing line. Some part, portions of the state still sitting below freezing, and they're doing well down here in Idabel, 47 degrees. Now, it certainly doesn't feel like 37 degrees here in Norman with those wind chills. Hang on, 27 degrees in Norman, and much up, upwards towards the panel, seeing some teens for that wind chill. Now, for our MS forecast, here's our storm system that just rolled through. Our next one, hanging out in the Pacific. Here's our warm-up on Sunday. 4 p.m., that's going to really hang around. And then our next chance for rain, talking Wednesday morning of next week, it's going to go off towards our northeast. And then tracking something else later on. We'll talk about that later next week. Lows tonight, 24 here in Norman, just below average. 30 out down here in Idabel, even 3 degrees in Guymon. Now talking about tomorrow, hour by hour, 
We're going to heat up up to the, into the 40s, maybe, put, maybe hit some 50s. And then tomorrow, highs tomorrow, 49 here in Norman, 50 in Ardmore, 54 in Elk City, sitting around right about average. Now for our seven-day forecast, you know, that's the, those chilly two days right there. But here's our warm-up, 67 on, one, on Sunday, 67 on Monday, 71 on Tuesday. And then there's that chance of rain next week. Ladies? Thanks, Eli. Now, Catherine, I'm loving all the Sooner basketball, but I'm ready for some football to return. <laughs> Me too, Bailey. I'm really excited to see what Brett Venables has in store for next season. Kaylee Joe Hommel tells us about the future of Sooner football and more in sports. That's right, we have the latest on the Sooners mentality heading into the SEC from Brent Venables, and women's basketball has its eyes on the top of the Big 12 standings. I'll have this and more in sports. Hello, I'm Kaylee Jo Hommel, and it's time for sports. Despite the news of the move to the SEC, head coach Brent Venables is staying focused for the upcoming football season. Yeah, I mean, for me, it really, I just go back to where are we at right now, being inside out, regardless of the conference affiliation, we're in the Big 12, these are still the same improvements that we need to make. We need to, we need to make improvement in every single area uh, in regards to this program. Jenny Baranchek and the women are on the hunt for the Big 12 championship, and they proved it Wednesday. Aubrey Jones led women's basketball with 23 points, sweeping Texas Tech for the season. Oklahoma outscored the Red Raiders in all four quarters, winning 84-57. On deck for the Sooners, a road trip to Kansas to face the Jayhawks. And looking further ahead for women's basketball, a future Sooner is making headlines. OU signee Sahara Williams was named to Team USA for the Nike Summit. Williams signed with OU in November and is ESPN's number 23 player in her class. Over in the NBA, the Thunder took off past the Rockets, scoring their largest victory margin of the season. OKC flew ahead early on taking the lead wire to wire in the 133-96 win. As usual, Shea Gilgis Alexander took care of business, posting 29 points while sitting out the full fourth quarter. Back to some Sooner sports, OU Wrestling heads to Bedlam Thursday night. Oklahoma State sits at number six in the rankings and left Norman with a win the last time the pair met. OU is coming off a top 25 win over South Dakota State, while the Cowboys are riding a four-match hot streak. Moving to the mound, Oklahoma baseball returns after an unforgettable 2022 run. The season opens against California Baptist Friday at 3 p.m. here in Norman. The three-game series finishes out through the weekend, followed by a single matchup versus Air Force Monday. And ahead of All-Star Weekend, Buddy Heald made history. The Indiana Pacer broke Reggie Miller's franchise record for three-pointers Wednesday night with his 230th. Miller held this record for 26 years. That's it for sports. Thanks, Kaylee. It seems like there have been a lot of records broken in basketball lately. I mean, LeBron James, now Buddy Heald. I mean, it's an exciting time for basketball. It really is. And, you know, police were lucky to help an animal reunite with its family. When we return, find out just how far this pet traveled away from home.
Update Desk. The United States Supreme Court removes Title 42 arguments from its calendar. Title 42 allows for immigrants to be turned away at the border due to COVID-19 concerns. The pandemic era policy is set to expire May 11th. Bailey, Catherine, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Becca. A pet went missing from its home in Miami, Florida, and its owners filed a police report thinking that the animal was stolen. Now, two years after that report was filed, Lucky, the orange tabby cat, has been found very far from his home. Police in Prairie Village, Kansas, couldn't believe it when they used microchip technology to identify the cat and found out it was over 1,400 miles from home. The cat's owner has been found and the Prairie Village Police Department will be taking care of Lucky until his family can come get him. And man, that is such a cute story. And I am so glad that Lucky was able to find his home. Me too. And it looks like Lucky might be bringing some of that Miami weather this weekend. Mm -hmm. Eli, can you give us one last look at our forecast? Yeah, that Miami weather is on the way, but just not quite yet. Looking at tomorrow, starting off in the 30s, we're going to heat up to about I'll push in 50, uh, 50 degrees. And look at the winds. The difference between today and tomorrow will feel much nicer uh, tomorrow. Now, going into our seven-day forecast, there's that Miami weather. Look at Tuesday, 71 degrees, and then we're going to have a chance of rain going into Wednesday. Ladies, back to you. Thanks, Eli. I'm really excited for those temperatures to warm up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great next week. Maybe, maybe not tomorrow, but hopefully yeah. this weekend and into next week. There's, a, there's some hope for us. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Bailey Coyle. And I'm Catherine Liberta. Be sure to tune in to OU Nightly every weekday, live at 430. Good night.